when you focus on the breath, make up your mind you're trying to get the mind to settle down into a state of nice concentration. It's food for the mind. As the Buddha said, there are three kinds of food for the mind. There's consciousness at the senses, the contact at the senses, and then there's your intentions. Now the contact outside, that's something that comes and goes. But your intentions, those are things you can make last. And you can fix them so that they're good food, or you can fix them so they're bad food. So when we're meditating, we're making good food for the mind, showing to ourselves that we have genuinely good intentions for ourselves and for the people around us. We're going to try to find a happiness that doesn't harm anybody. That way we benefit and they benefit too. Because if our happiness harms somebody else, they're not going to stand for it. It's not going to last. But a happiness that comes from within, where you learn how to feed the mind with good intentions, it doesn't harm anybody. There's nobody going to be jealous of it. When you're focusing on the breath, they're focusing on an area of your awareness that nobody else can take, nobody else can share. This is your property. But this doesn't mean that by developing goodness inside, you're not also feeding others. When you have goodwill for other people, you show your good wishes for other people, it's food for them. And John Lee had a Dharma talk where he was saying that food for him was seeing that his students were practicing, intent on practicing. As he said, he was a he was a monster monk. He liked to eat people. He ate their practice. In other words, by seeing them practice, he nourished himself. So by nourishing ourselves properly, it also helps to nourish others. So keep that in mind. All the practices we do and benefit us and benefit other people too. When we're generous, we gain in the perfection of generosity, and other people gain the things that we've we've given. When we're virtuous, we gain the perfection of virtue, and other people are protected from harmful actions, at least from our quarter. As the Buddha said, if you make up your mind, you're not going to harm anybody, you're not going to break the precepts with regard to anybody at all, you're giving universal safety. And you're going to get a portion of that universal safety as well. And there's finally there's meditation. The less greed, aversion, and delusion you have in your mind, the more you can bring these things under control so they're not out prowling around disturbing the neighborhood. You benefit, the people around you benefit too. So it's in feeding the mind in these ways that we break down barriers in society. We have known that story with the person who once said to a John Sawat, why, don't, doesn't Buddha, why doesn't Buddhism have a god? If you had a god, then you could have a sense of there's somebody that's supporting you there in days when your practice didn't go well. And as John Swan said, if there were a god who could proclaim that by my taking one mouthful of food, everybody else could get it full as well, I'd bow down to that god. Well, physical food doesn't work that way. But mental food does work to that way, at least to some extent. You feed your mind well, and it's going to be good food for other people. Gives them encouragement to realize okay, the human race does have good, good people in it. And the human race can be a good place to stay, a good place to help. Because we all have developed good feeding habits. Now, not everybody's going to develop them, but at the very least you can have good feeding habits this way. And it'll spread its goodness around. <laughs>